Solomon's Vegas Adventures. Hey guys, so you remember my last earthquake video where I talked about an earthquake as strong as magnitude 7 possibly hitting Las Vegas? Well, guess what? There's a possibility of an earthquake as strong as magnitude 8 hitting Las Vegas. So join me in another one of Solomon's Vegas Adventures as I go explore the state line fault. Let's go. So this is the most recent study of the state line fault I could find. It's actually a UNLV PhD thesis by Jonathan Carter, so I'll be referencing this among other sources, but I'd like to give special thanks to Jonathan and this amazing study. So the state line fault is a 200 kilometer long strike slip fault that runs from Prim to Beatty, roughly following the California-Nevada border. And for those of you not well versed with geology, a strike slip fault is basically a fault where the blocks move laterally to each other rather than up or down. And a right lateral strike slip fault, which is what the state line fault is, is a strike slip fault where if you were to look along its length, the right block moves towards you and the left block moves away from you. So perhaps the most famous example of a strike slip fault is the San Andreas Fault, which is right lateral because the Pacific Plate is moving northwest and the North American Plate is moving southeast in relation to each other. And the state line fault is right lateral because it accommodates some of the slip between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. And the state line fault exists in a geologic province known as the Walker Lane Belt, but also referred to as the Eastern California Shear Zone by some. And in this geologic province, it actually accounts for about 25% of all the plate motion between the North American and the Pacific Plates. The San Andreas Fault does not account for 100% of the motion. It actually only accounts for about 75%. The remaining 25 go into this series of strike-slip faults located east of the Sierra Nevadas, known as the Walker Lane Seismic Belt. To quantify this for you guys, the San Andreas Fault accommodates about 50 millimeters per year of displacement between the Pacific and North American plates, and the Walker Lane Belt on its own accommodates for about 12 millimeters per year. Of that, the State Line Fault accommodates about 2.3 millimeters of displacement per year. And interestingly, several scientific articles have come out suggesting that the Walker Lane could become the new plate boundary between the North American and Pacific plates in this locality, thus making the San Andreas extinct in the future and Walker Lane being 100% of the accommodation zone between plate motion. So some major faults in the Walker Lane Seismic Belt include the Garlock Fault, Owens Valley Fault, White Mountain Fault, Fish Lake Valley Fault, Death Valley Fault, Panamint Valley Fault, and Searles Valley Fault. And also the state line fault. The interesting thing about the state line fault though is that it actually straddles two major geologic provinces. That would be the Walker Lane Seismic Belt and the Central Basin and Range Province. Despite its proximity to the Central Basin and Range Province, its tectonic behavior is typical of Walker Lane faults. As previously stated, the state line fault is a right lateral strike slip fault and it is active and has been active during the Quaternary. The faults in Walker Lane are known seismic threats and have produced several earthquakes greater than magnitude 7 in recent history. Most notably, the 1992 Landers earthquake, 1999 Hector Mine earthquake, and the massive 1872 Lone Pine earthquake, measuring a whopping 7.9 on the Richter scale. Most recently was the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake, which was a magnitude 7.1 earthquake located on a Walker Lane fault that was felt from Las Vegas to Los Angeles to Phoenix and everywhere in between. The state line fault is no exception to these other active Walker Lane faults, and though it has been relatively quiet, it is still capable of producing a massive earthquake. The state line fault has had at least three and possibly four strong earthquakes in the last 3,300 years, and the fact that it has been quiet recently is alarming. The data indicates that there have been several earthquakes larger than magnitude 6 and even a few larger than magnitude 7 that have occurred on this fault. And here's where it gets scary, y'all. It is estimated that a magnitude 7.8 earthquake could occur on the state line fault, and it presents a huge hazard to Las Vegas and Pahrump. And the magnitude 7.8 estimate could be conservative. Some mathematical models show a possibility of a magnitude 8.2 earthquake occurring on this fault if the entire fault ruptures. If an 8.2 occurs on the state line fault, the result would be cataclysmic. The epicenter would be only 40 kilometers from Las Vegas. Luckily, a lot of the buildings in Las Vegas are up to earthquake code, but if this earthquake were to hit here, it would be the big one. I guess the only thing left to do is to go check that fault out. Let's go, guys. 
So getting to the state line fault from town is actually quite simple. Just get on Highway 160 West past Mountain Springs until you get to Tacopa Road. Turn left on Tacopa Road and stop two miles before the California border. All right, guys, so we have arrived here at the state line fault. We're uh, just off Tacopa Road right before the Nevada-California border. And if you look behind me, it's a gorgeous view of Mount Charleston and the Spring Mountains. So uh, we're going to check the fault out. Let's go. All right, guys. So what you're looking at here, these are just mounds. These are mounds with mesquite trees growing on them. And they just look unassuming, you know, to the regular human. But to geologists, this is literally where the state line fault is. Now, the reason why these trees grow and why there's these mesquite mounds is because the soil is so much weaker from the ongoing stress associated with this strike slip fault. And remember, strike slip faults move laterally. They don't move up and down, they move side to side. So as the soil grinds side to side, like Ariana Grande, um, basically a bunch of trees come in and take advantage of it because it's weaker soil. And if you look at this on a satellite, it's like a line of this. And that line is the state line fault. So let's see if you guys can see the line in this. And uh, that's the fault outlined with the satellite imagery. So you're looking over there at the Kingston Range in California. And then if we pan over, there's the Nopa Range over there, also in California. And guys, we're near the border of California. So like I said, state line, basically named because it's the state line of California and Nevada. So uh, the interesting thing about this fault is that it started being active around 13 million years ago. And in that 13 million years, it's had 30 kilometers of slip, of displacement. So 30 kilometers of displacement. Now, how do we know this? Well, there are Miocene intrusions, especially at Devil Peak, where magma under the ground almost surfaced, but then came up after it cooled. And Black Butte is 30 kilometers away from Devil Peak, and it is the same formation as Devil Peak is. So Black Butte was moved 30 kilometers from its original location in the last 13 million years due to the state line fault. And like I said, guys, the state line fault has been unusually quiet. The last earthquake here, the last major earthquake here was about 900 years ago. So, you know, the old adage is, oh, we're overdue. We're overdue. So these mounds that you see are formed by the faulting because as the two blocks of the fault, the two sides of the earth move past each other. Sometimes they get stuck and they periodically make these mounds go up. And these trees take advantage of the weakened soil in the mounds. So this area right here is really interesting. This is one of the fault mounds, one of the mounds associated with the fault. And you can see how weak the soil and the rock is here. It's just been grinded up by the movement, the right lateral movement of the state line fault. It's, come look at here, guys. This rock has just been destroyed. You know, it's, it's just collapsing on itself. You know, guys, it's funny. The ground is noticeably a lot more stable and a lot more compact and a lot harder here than it was when we were on one of those fault mounds. So guys, it's actually pretty noticeable, the trace of this fault. You just look starting southeast of us and you pan over and you see these mounds, these mesquite mounds, and you look all the way to the northwest and it's just noticeably a linear pattern it's just a line all of this just crap that's just been strewn by the earth not by humans by the earth it's rather difficult to see but this is some footage from the highway um past the california border we drove into the town of charleston view and you can clearly see the fault it's that light color just beneath the dark where the mountains are and it runs for miles, guys, just runs for miles. All right, guys, so uh, that was the state line fault. Uh, it runs for about 200 kilometers from Prim all the way to Beatty, basically follows the California-Nevada state line. And it's a right lateral strike slip fault, capable of a magnitude 7.8 earthquake, uh, possibly an 8.2, depending on some models. And uh, you can see it via satellite pretty clearly. There's just a line of mounds with mesquite trees that basically run 200 kilometers through the desert here. That's the state line fault. Hopefully it doesn't rupture right now while I'm out here. That would be crazy. But uh, this has been 
Solomon from Solomon's Vegas Adventures, and uh, I hope you guys go out and explore. Peace.